Hey there, beloved saints. Uh, I haven't felt good the last week. Whenever it gets cold, it gets harder on me. Feeling a bit better. Uh, before I get into this, I want to remind you we have Bible study live tonight on the Church of the Eternally Secure channel at about an hour at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Please join us again. It's on the Church of the Eternally Secure channel at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, so in like an hour. We're going to have live Bible study with Chad. I hope you'll join us over there. But I want to address this. All right. I, I am often given this objection whenever I contend for the truth of our eternal security, our blessed assurance in Christ. Because we are born of God once we trusted in Christ. Salvation is based on what Jesus did on Calvary. We owed a debt we could never pay. God knew the whole debt we'd owe our whole life. He saw it and put it on Christ, not up until a certain time. And then the rest of the sin is on me because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Jesus paid our sin debt, period. And that's why we're saved. It's all based on Jesus and what he did. And that's the good news of the gospel. But I will always, always get this objection. And it's amazing to me how man will always try to find a loophole for bad news. They will always try to find at least one way God's promise can be lost. And this is usually what it is. Even those that, un that understand it's not by works, so they know we can't lose it because we did bad works or didn't do enough good works because it's not by works. They get it, okay? But they will say, if you stop believing or if you start hating God and want to give it back, your free will can give it back. So that's how you can lose your salvation. And uh, I'd say, really? Is that true? I'd say, one, I, I, I fear you don't understand what a good father we have. What a family we've been born into. See, God's not faithful because your faith is strong or your faith abides or anything you've done. Okay, God's faithful because he's promised. So we're going we're gonna to look at this. We've been born, not a corruptible seed, but by the word of God, by the spirit, right? So we're born into God's family. We cannot be unborn even if we want to be rebellious, idiotic children or we suffer a faith crisis, uh, that's when we need God most. So you think that our father, who is greater than any human father, better, more loving, more understanding than any human father, would, when his child wants to do something destructive, not, not only destructive, but will make them perish be destroyed that god is just gonna let you have your way once you're his kid he's gonna say well it's really out of my hands i just can't keep my children i just can't keep them saved because it's their will that they go to hell so i gotta let them go i gotta let them perish even when i said they'd never perish even when I said they wouldn't come into condemnation, they're going to go into condemnation in Paris now because they want to. Okay, even a human father who's evil, according to Jesus, that we, being evil, can give good gifts to our children. Let's look at that verse. It tells us in comparison how human beings are evil. Matthew 7, 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more share your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. So he's talking to the Jews about asking God for provision. Okay. And says, we're evil. So if human beings are evil and I wouldn't let my kid, even if he said, mom, I hate you. I don't believe anything you say. I'm going to go uh, into that burning fire in that house over there and destroy myself. Do you think I'd let him because it's his free will to do that choice? No. Once he's my kid, mm -mm, ain't happening. Same thing with God. 
a mother, a human mother or father that's a decent parent would never allow their child through bad decision making destroy themselves. Neither is our good father. Okay? He understands children get into rebellion. Look at the story of the prodigal son. He didn't stop being his father. He stopped having relationship with him. But it wasn't the father's fault. He didn't beat him up for making all those mistakes. He even tried to grovel. Father wouldn't let him. He just embraced him and kissed him and threw a party. See, people are always trying to find a way that God will stop being faithful. They always try to find a way out. And I'm telling you, once God has you, he sees the end from the beginning. He knows what you're going to do. He knows that one day at such and such date, your faith is going to fail. He knows uh, that one day you're going to make this terrible mistake, all right, or commit this terrible sin. Do you think you're shocking God like he doesn't know? And he's like, oh, I shouldn't have saved him. Oh, my bad. I should have never gave them to Jesus because he just can't keep them. I mean, it's just ridiculous when you understand God's character, how mankind is looking for a way to lose and bring in some bad news. But I, I want to I want to look over here in 2 Timothy. It says, even when we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, cannot deny himself. See, if God has proclaimed something true, it doesn't matter what we do. He can't deny himself. He has spoken and promised from a God who cannot lie, swearing by himself, that he would give us eternal life. Once you're born into God's family, even if we don't believe, even if we stop believing God's promise, he abides faithful, cannot deny himself. All right. So you're going to see here where a couple of uh, Muppets messed up some faith here. These guys went around telling uh, I think it's the church in Ephesus that they missed the resurrection and shipwrecked their faith. And they started thinking, what? We missed it? All right. So you can see here, false teachers can come in and shipwreck a person's faith. That's why I'm telling you, get full of God's word. And by the way, God doesn't want anybody to lose their faith. He, does, he wants you to be strong in the faith. A workman... Rightly dividing the word of truth. It's, it's, it, it's even in the same chapter. To study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth. So we want to do that. It helps us keep on the helmet of salvation so no false teacher can come in with these, uh, or Satan with his fiery darts trying to talk us out of our salvation. We know in whom we've trusted. We know why we have eternal life. It has nothing to do with us. I'm getting ready to do a video against uh, John MacArthur and his ridiculous statements he makes. Um, it's just plain work salvation, people. All right, so I, I want to show you these, these couple of guys here in 2 Timothy that overthrew people's faith, okay? And we're going to see what God says about that. Did God say, well, you know, they lost their faith, so... Come on. All right. So 2 Timothy, it says, And their word will eat as doth a canker. What does a canker sore do? All right. It starts to eat away at the inside of the mouth. And, and by the way, your tongue finds its way to, to mess with it all the time, keeping you occupied and focused on it. Okay. So their word eats like a canker, meaning that the evil lies they've preached has eaten away at your security and your joy. All right. See, that's what the enemy does. He can't take you out of God's hand, but he might be able to make you think he did. And he can strip you of your joy and your peace and your security. So you're unsure and you won't tell anyone else how to be saved. And by the way, church on every corner here, very few preach the saving message in the Bible of the gospel. 
All right. There's very few of us preaching the true gospel by grace through faith alone in the finished work of Christ alone. Now, I know a lot of places claim that, but not really. They backload it or they redefine words. We're telling you the biblical meaning. Jesus did it all on Calvary. If you trust what he did for you, that you owed a debt you could never pay, he paid that debt. And since you got to be perfect to enter heaven, you're born again, given God's righteousness as a new reborn spirit. And one day you'll get a new body to go with it because flesh and blood doesn't inherit the kingdom. So here's the thing. We see these guys, their word doth eat, doth, wait, let me see, will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. So these two uh, guys, these Muppets, are Hymenaeus and Philetus. They're causing trouble here. Their words eating like a canker, who concerning the truth have erred. So they made a mistake here. They've left the truth, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So the preaching they were doing had overthrown some of these people's faith. It was eating away, all right? But what does God say? It says, nevertheless, okay, nevertheless, their faith has been messed up. Uh, it's overthrown their faith. They started believing false things and stopped believing right. Nevertheless, the foundation of God, what is our foundation? Jesus Christ and his finished work. It's the only foundation that can be laid. We're told that in scripture and to build upon that. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Did you hear that? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. All right. And it says, let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Okay. We all agree with that, but that's not the point of this whole video here. We all believe in, uh, studying God's word, having the word of God in us to give us strength, to understand God's word, to grow, to be strong Christians, to walk out our identity in Christ and serving God, living different than the world. We believe all that. And those that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We believe in that too. But uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about salvation and the security of salvation and how you can't give it back even if uh, you as a silly child wanted to do that. Our Father is not going to let you do anything that destroys you because he said you will never perish and the foundation of God stand sure. God knoweth them that are his, even if you err from the truth. So I am not uh, going to let anybody have a loophole that lets God's promises not be true. Once God's revealed to you what Christ has done on Calvary, and you've put your trust in that, you understand it. You know you have eternal life because of what he did on Calvary. His blood paid your sin debt. You've passed from death to life. You're born into God's family, sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. God himself keeps you that way. All right? It is God that preserves you in Christ. It is God that keeps you. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. God knows them that are his. Okay, guys? All right. Uh... I'm going to probably try to, I got a couple of videos I want to edit together. I have so much to catch up on. It has been a week. I haven't checked emails. I haven't been up. I've had a fever off and on. It's just been a mess. So I, I got to catch a lot up. So bear with me if you contacted me and I haven't answered you.